Ah, the Titan IV. One of my favourite launch vehicles ever flown. It was powerful, it looked cool, and it carried prestigious payloads such as Cassini Huygens and... I think that was about it. The Titan IV was created initially to complement the Space Shuttle for launching US Air Force payloads, but after the Challenger disaster created a renewed dependence on expendable vehicles, the Titan IV program was significantly expanded. Whilst the Titan IV was the most capable American launch vehicle during its tenure, it was also expensive, unreliable, and it used hideously toxic hypergolic propellants in its first and second stages. Perhaps it's no wonder, then, that the Titan IV was the last of the nearly 50-year-long Titan family, with Lockheed Martin developing the Atlas V for the US Air Force's evolved expendable launch vehicle program. But what if a Titan V, not that one, was developed? What could the Titan V have been? Well, sit down, be blasted by rocketry and astrodynamics terminology, and maybe I'll throw a few ideas into the ring. I appreciate this isn't the kind of video I usually make, but rocketry engineering is one of the things I find most interesting in life. This is my channel, so shut up! But before we can wax theoretical, we need to get a baseline of the Titan IV's performance. I built a rough approximation of a Titan IV 403B and 401B in Kerbal Space Program with the Realism Overhaul Suite. The tank diameters were correct, the engines were correct, the burn times were correct, and for the tank types, well, I wasn't able to find any hard information on what tanks were used, so I opted for separate aluminium-copper tanks, since all I do know is that aluminium-lithium tanks were a proposed upgrade that were never implemented. The main difference between the 403B and 401B is that the 403B has no upper stages and is optimised for delivering heavy payloads to low Earth orbit, whereas the 401B has a Centaur upper stage for delivering more modest but still relatively heavy payloads to high energy orbits. To test the capabilities of the launch vehicles, two different dummy payloads were used. For low Earth orbit tests, a 21-ton payload was launched, and for high energy tests, a more modest 6.5-ton payload was launched. Equatorial flights were launched out of Launch Complex 41 at Cape Canaveral, and polar launches were conducted from Vandenberg on the west coast. All three tests were launched into the same 160km parking orbit using the same MechJeb Primer Vector guidance configuration, with the high energy test later being burnt to depletion to see how far it could go into the outer solar system. And before anyone comments, yes, a 160km orbit would be horrifically unstable for long-term missions in real life. But this is Kerbal Space Program, where the atmosphere magically stops at 140km, so it doesn't matter here. So then, let's talk results. wonder if Lockheed Martin ever encountered the Kraken before. So, after fixing that little anomaly, the 403B launched out of Florida reached orbit with 550 meters per second of delta V remaining. When launched out of Vandenberg, it reached orbit with 102 meters per second remaining. The 401B, also launched out of Florida, reached orbit with 4,643 meters per second remaining. After burning the engines to depletion, it had an aphelion of approximately 380 million kilometers. These are our targets to beat. So, how do we top them? Well, we can look to a short subsection on Wikipedia for inspiration. Apparently, a suggested idea for a Titan V was to use a Hydrolox first stage, so let's see what we can do with this idea. So for the first Titan V, I swapped the Titan IV's LR87AJ11A engines for a pair of vacuum-optimized LR87 LH2s. Since these bad boys get about 420 seconds of specific impulse, compared to the 300-ish seconds of the AJ11As, you'd expect this stage to have leagues better performance. But fun fact, no. You see, the liquid hydrogen has a far lower density than the hypergolic propellant it's replacing, so whilst it has a much better impulse per unit mass, it has worse impulse per unit of tank volume. This means, to hit the same burn time as the Titan IV, we need much longer tanks, which not only increases the dry mass, i.e. the empty or unrefueled mass of the stage, it also makes the Titan V look a bit... silly. 
The other problem I ran into is that whilst the LR87 LH2 was developed and proven in real life, there is no such equivalent to my knowledge with the LR91 for the second stage, and my install of Kerbal Space Program Realism Overhaul didn't have a speculative version. Therefore, I switched to the speculative LR91 AJ9 Keralox engine, since that would at least do away with the highly toxic hypergolic propellants of the LR91 AJ11A. The burn time for both stages were kept the same, so let's see how it performs. The same 21 ton dummy payload was used for the low earth orbit tests, and I didn't bother with the heliocentric tests for reasons that will soon be apparent. After a few test flights to figure out the right booster pitch rate, since the lighter liquid hydrogen meant the rocket needed a more aggressive gravity turn, the two low earth orbit tests were conducted. Launching out of Florida, it reached orbit with 609 meters per second remaining, and launching out of Vandenberg, it reached orbit with 170 meters per second remaining. So whilst this Titan V is an improvement for the environment over the Titan IV, it's a smidgen underwhelming for its performance. Adjusting the payload mass such that the vehicle has the same delta V as the Titan IV test, the payload is a whole 290 kilograms heavier which is a whopping 1.38% increase in payload. Whoopee. And this is why I didn't bother with the Centaur tests. So, to get a more substantial increase in payload capabilities, it's clear that some major changes are going to be needed. This brings us to the next idea. Because I'm unoriginal, I call this version the Titan V Next. The Next brings two major innovations to the table. Firstly, the separate aluminium copper tanks on the first stage were swapped for isogrid aluminium lithium tanks, which substantially cut down on the dry mass. Secondly, the Keralox second stage was replaced with a Hydrolox stage. Since, as mentioned before, KSP RO doesn't feature a Hydrolox LR91, I simulated one with four RL10A4s, which generated approximately the same thrust as the LR91 series and had approximately the right mass. To achieve the same burn time as before, the second tank had to be stretched, which made the rocket look even sillier. But proportions aside, this new upper stage, which is essentially a supersized centaur that can't restart, it really does the business, as shown by the three tests. The 503 launching out of Florida reached orbit with 1,159 meters per second remaining. Launching out of Vandenberg, it reached orbit with 745 meters per second remaining. The 501 reached orbit with 4,915 meters per second remaining. Once burnt to depletion, it achieved an aphelion of approximately 424 million kilometers. So the 503 next is a substantial improvement for low Earth orbit payloads, as the dummy could be increased by 4.6 tons whilst matching the 403B, meaning a 21.9% increase in payload capacity. The 501 Next was also an improvement over the 401B, but notice that the second stage still has gas in the tank when reaching orbit. Remember, our pseudo LR91 LH2 cannot restart, so any unburnt fuel upon reaching orbit is going to waste. This means that we can substantially stretch the Centaur upper stage to fling payloads even further out. So this gives rise to the next idea. The main tank of the Centaur was stretched to a delightfully arbitrary 3.6 meters in length, and the engines were upgraded from a pair of RL10A4s to a pair of RL10C1-1s. The length of the payload fairing was also stretched to accommodate the new upper stage, which I christened the Centaur T2. Once mated to the Titan V core, the combined stack needed a new name. But what could be more next than next? That's when I settled on Nexter's lab, because I am an absolute genius. As for how it performed, Nexter's lab reached orbit with 5,301 meters per second of delta V remaining, and once burnt to depletion, achieved an aphelion of approximately 501 million kilometers. So it's safe to say that this improved Titan Centaur can handle payloads a fair bit heavier than the 401B. When adjusting the payload mass of the 501 Nexter's lab to match the delta V of the 401B, the additional 1.6-ish tons meant an increased payload of 24.6%, and there is doubtless room to optimize further. So I believe that this is the likeliest path a Titan V would have taken. 
It almost certainly wouldn't alleviate costs. If anything, it would make them worse. And reliability is anyone's guess. But it would be more performant, and it wouldn't have to deal with those highly toxic hypergolic propellants. But there is one more idea I wanted to try. So you know those two huge boosters on the side of the Titan core? What if, right, we just use more of them? If we kick logic and practicality to the curb and embrace chaotic evil, we can make all our problems disappear by simply putting our trust in more thrust. Not only did this look like an ungainly mass of crayons strapped together, it also exceeded the 1000 ton avionics limit of the guidance computer, which necessitated an upgrade to the 4000 ton capable guidance unit. As for the staging, the outer six motors ignite at liftoff and carry what is essentially an entire Titan IV to an ignition altitude of about 40 kilometers, with an ignition velocity of about 1,500 meters per second. This monument to utter absurdity pushed both payload capacities and my computer usage to new levels. I didn't even bother with the 21-ton dummy payload, since just looking at Mech Jeb's Delta V stats in the Vehicle Assembly Building showed that this Titan IV More Boosters edition would be obscene overkill. In the end, it was able to haul a 58.85-ton payload out of both Cape Canaveral and Vandenberg to low Earth orbit. I don't think this is a particularly realistic option for a Titan V, given that... I mean, just look at this thing! How would this ever get approved? But it certainly could do the work, and then some. So that concludes this quick look into some possible Titan Fives. I don't really have any conclusions, I just thought this would be an interesting video. Okay, goodbye.